Well, good morning, everybody. You're here for the KB Core training. We just got done with the uh, the coaching calls on Monday where we did some FISBO calls, and that was fun. KB Core training today is going to be kind of in the basic levels, and I'll, I'll be happy to answer advanced phone calls. But really, I want to make sure that we're inclusive of everybody's experiences they're coming into this. And then we record these. So two weeks ago, we did the basics, how to put people into your KB Core system, uh, how to add a contact, um, you know, how to do the, the validation on the contact. I'm going to go over those real quick today. Um, sorry, Mario. Can everybody else hear me okay? Okay, Mario, I think it's you, bud. So, um, so check your mute, check your speaker, that kind of stuff. Make sure you can hear me. All right. So as we look at KB Core, there's a couple fundamental things to look at every day, which is your dashboard. And beyond dashboard, it's going to get into the daily maintenance of your KB Core account. So I'm going to pull up. Let me look at this chat. I think that was Mario. OK, cool. So I'm going to share my screen and share my KB Core platform with you so you can see what's going on. Now, um, me personally, I've really kind of moved away from KB Core for the um, CRM aspects. It's a free, provided, very robust CRM by eXp. So I still use it. I still train in it. But we're really focused in uh, two other CRMs for our agent attraction, CRM Grow. And then we've been using Chime for um, our business account. But I still use KV Core for my team. I still use KV Core as a website and a lead generation platform. So it's got a lot of robust opportunities with it. So the first thing I want to show you is when you go to eXp or when you go to your KV Core dashboard, you're going to see this either condensed um, uh, icons on the side here. Or you could open it up with the three hamburgers right here and so you could see what it says. So you have dashboard, playbooks, your smart CRM. This is where all your contacts will be. Your listings, your marketing. This is where all your presentations will be, all your campaigns, all that automation. Lead engine. This is where you could do all things leads. Build landing pages, build squeeze pages, call and text capture. Um, get more leads and core property boost, which is one of the most powerful tools KB Core has to promote your listings by boosting the listings called core property boost. Um, and then you have transactions where you can put things in here. We use SkySlope outside of KB Core. You have your website manager, Web and IDX. This is your website, your blog, embedding, settings, all those things here. Marketplace is just that. It's places to add on things to KB Core. So if you go to Marketplace, for instance, you can add on all kinds of things like voicemail drop, bomb bomb. There's just a host of products in here that are available for you. And then the next one is uh, business analytics. This is where I could look at my team members and look at their performance, how long it takes them to call back leads. All kinds of things are in here under the uh, business analytics page, if you're running a team or if you're a solo agent, it will show up just as yourself, okay? So, and then last is support and training. I get a lot of questions about KV Core that are covered in these courses and in these webinars. Go into these courses and start looking at things that are valuable for you. Courses for team leaders, courses for agents. If you go in here, there's just really a lot of different things. Quick start, success plan, daily calls and task management, converting your contacts into leads, KV Core lender, social media posting protocol, just all kinds of stuff, including next level, more training resources, YouTube, Facebook, one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, live training calendar, webinars. There's just a ton of things available. All right. So I would always push people back to this to go see if you could find this resource. We're big fans of teaching you to fish, not giving you fish, right? You teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. And so it's not that we don't want to teach you and show you this stuff. It's better for you sometimes to learn it and experience it on your own. So these are the highlighted items of kind of the shortcuts to the front end of KV Core. Any questions on that? 
particular piece real quick before we go in a little deeper. Remember, this is about you. This is interactive and not about me talking the whole time. I want to want to make sure you're understanding this or getting your questions answered along the way. So any questions on any of those? Okay. So next thing, when we have our dashboard, this is going to be where you want to come every day and just get a look at what's going on in your in your business, right? So for instance, we had somebody come through two days ago through referral exchange. And it was a referral lead for a for a listing. Now I've called her twice. I've sent her several messages. She's not responded to anything. So she's still a new lead. To me, they come in as a new lead, and then I move them to active lead or prospect, depending on what, what's going on. And then once I'm physically showing them properties or I'm in escrow, then we can bring them in as a client uh, or change it to contract if you're in escrow. But this is a good example of how we can operate and, and work with a particular lead. So I'm going to go back in time a little bit. So this is the dashboard. You're going to see that all the leads are across the page here for new leads, right? You could also click new texts. So you can see anybody that's texted me in the system in the last, you know, in whatever amount of time. It goes back all the way to several, three, four months ago, four months ago. We've got texts in the system. Remember, I'm primarily in another CRM, so this is very light. But if you're very active, then it will be in here completely. Okay. So you can see that I have Shirley Took six days ago sent me a text. She was another seller. We ended up passing on that. It was a mobile home in a park. We did the CMA, ended up passing on her. Um, and then this one said uh, she had an unexpected death in the family. So it's a snapshot. You could also look at leads. You could also go to hot leads, emails and leads. So hot leads are people that are on your site looking at properties, okay? So these people are actively looking on my website right now at properties. Sandra Penrod, two hours ago, was looking at this property on my website. So she was looking at Shiloh Valley and Santa Rosa. Let's pull it up. 3.7 million. 3.7 million in Shiloh Valley. And um, she was looking at this particular property. Um, so we can go back to her, right? We can go back to the dashboard and we could look at Sandra and we could see what she's been doing lately. So Sandra has been looking at properties on the 8th. She looked at properties on the 5th. So we sent her an email. Hey, I noticed you're looking at some properties. She hasn't responded yet. I don't have a phone for her, so I can't call her. She came on the site without a phone number. Um, so I have an email for her. So what I could do is I could send her an email and I could, for instance, let me cancel out of here. So I could email her this listing. And if I click that email, automatically put that property in there, right? And then I could say something like, Sandra, I see you looking at this listing, blank, blank, blank. I have some other info to share. Would you like to do a quick call and discuss? Or are you interested or did you get all the info you wanted you were looking for okay and then randy bird she may not know who i am at this point she's been on my site she's looking we're trying to do it but i may put in here my site realty explained right dot us all right. So I can include. Hold on. You have an extra R before you I do. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do a quick call and discuss or did you. OK, thank you. I see you are looking at this listing. OK, so I can include my signature or not. I always do. 
And then I'm going to send this. And then I'm going to put in here, I'm going to say, P.S. What's the best number for you? The one I have is bad. Okay. Okay, boom, boom, we're gonna send it. So she has not been responsive, so we have nothing to lose, but I'm trying to engage and basically say, I have some more information, I have some details, I have something, a reason to talk. And then we can look in the MLS and find something, right? We can say, hey, they said no showings on Tuesday. We could say that, that there's been a price redu reduction lately, or it's been on the market 40 days with no price reduction. Any of that is, is information that we're talking about, okay? The last thing I do is make sure that she's set up on a property alert. She is. She's an active campaign, and I'm sending her a market report every seven days. Okay. So all those things are happening because I've set them up. Okay. So in my opinion, this, this client has been handled as of today. So if I ever speak to her, I can start adding like stars. My system I use, everybody's different, but one, if it's a real name, it's one star. If I call them and it goes, hi, this is Sandra, that's two stars, but I've never talked to them. As soon as I physically talk to them, they're three stars. If they're actively corresponding, they're four stars. And then obviously if we're showing properties, they're past clients, they're anything like that, they're five stars. The reason I want to do that star system is when I go to my contacts, and I pull up all my contacts, you'll see that I have, let me scroll down. I have 15,798 contacts in my CRM. That's a lot. You see the star system. So what I could do is I can go up here now and I can, I can go, let's do a filter. Let's say I only want prospects and new, or let's just do new leads. I only want new leads. We're going to apply filters. So now it says I have, oh, it must be something else. There must be another filter on. Hold on a second. Uh, clear filter, clear filter. Oh, there it is, clear. Clear filter. There you go. Okay, so now I wanna go filters and I wanna put new lead only and apply. So now you're gonna see that I have 115 new leads in the system that are categorized as a new lead. What I could do here is I could click rating and I could change them to five stars, four stars, three stars. So here I could look at people that were labeled as a five star and then I can go down and that becomes the hottest people in my list. Now these people haven't been connected within two years because I said that I don't use the system, but it's an automatic opportunity for me to go back through and say, hey, John was uh, a hot a couple of years ago. He never bought, he never sold. So it's an opportunity for us to reach out to him. Let's reach out to him and do a little database maintenance today. Okay, so everybody tracking with me so far? Any questions before I call? I can't see you when I'm sharing screen. So I take that as a yes. No question. Okay, cool, thank you. So let's call John. Again, the number you are trying to call is not reachable. PPS 6180 530-355-1382. Oh, so bad. Okay, so it's a bad number. So I can I can delete this so I know that I, I have a bad number there. And then I can I can send him an email as well by saying, hey, John, it's been a couple of years. I tried calling you. I have some information. Can you give me a call back? Whatever it may be. Okay. So again, you could go through these and just cycle next through them and make calls to people that are relevant. So that's the reason for the five and four stars and so on, okay? So if we go back to, we're gonna clear our, our filters again, go back to our dashboard. This is kind of what's happening in real time. You see that she was on two years ago. Fran was on a day ago. So Fran, as we pull her up, you can see that we don't have a phone for her as well. Now, this little um, button right here with the little ribbon, if you click on that, that revalidates their profile. 
and it will tell you if it found anything. So the email quality is excellent. And um, that's basically all we know. We didn't get a phone number from that, but they, we have an address, we have an email address, right? And they looked at a place in Santa Rosa for 412 grand. So again, we can email them very quickly. Um, this format just says, I think you may like this listing. Um, did you want any more info on it? I have some details. Thanks, Randy Bird. Okay. All right. So I'll put her first name in here at the beginning. Fran. So send. Again, we don't have her number. We could ask for that. Uh, I'd like to see if we get a response first, see if there's any kind of activity going on in this. And then again, she is on a property alert. She's on a market report, but she's not on an active campaign. So I'm going to add her to a campaign. And she's in Sonoma, Napa, and she is a buyer. So I'm going to add that campaign that will launch a campaign on her and she'll get some automations from me. Okay. And then we can go down the list. We see she was on two days ago, three, day, three days ago. So even though I've really not been working the system for a couple of years for Sonoma County, I have a team member there that we work on stuff together. But you can see all this activity that I'm still getting in Santa Rosa and Petaluma on my site from those years of activity there. Right. So all these are opportunities. And then uh, Alita's in here working these with me. We'll, we'll make calls and so on with that. So. That's the dashboard. I'm gonna take this off for a minute. And who is using dashboard now in their KB Core system? And if KB Core is brand new for you, I obviously you're not, but you can see the power of putting things into your KB Core system now and setting some automations. Kenny. I'm using the dashboard daily. Um, I've been doing a lot of open houses lately. And actually been, uh, boosting the open houses and getting a lot of leads that way. So putting them, calling them and also putting them on like um, property alerts, um, you know, one, one year buyer campaigns, that kind of thing. Totally. Totally. The, um, the property boost does have a property boost for open houses now specifically. So it's made to be like a three day post. What was it? 60 bucks, Kenny? No, it was, it was really good. It was uh three days for 45 bucks, I 45 bucks for three days. 23 leads out of it. It got, it got clicked on like a thousand times. Wow. That's pretty significant. That's, that's amazing. So again, even if you're not doing your own listing open house, you can advertise somebody else's open house. It appears as yours, all the Facebook ads, everything else comes through that um, open house category. So it's really a powerful tool. And if you have your own listings, then you can do the core property boost, which is seven days for, I think it's 60 bucks. Um, and then the open house is uh, $45 for three days, but that's a lot. How many leads again, did you get from that? 23. 23 leads. Three that's days. Significant. Three, 23 three days. It's pretty good. Added to the database, 23 people yep. in communication, right? All yep. for 45 bucks. Hey, Kenny, can you, repeat, the... can you repeat that open house thing that you did? Yeah, it was, um, it was an open house uh, boost. So basically, when you go to property boost, there's a few different options. You can do an open I'll, house. I'll show, I'll show them, Kenny. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go, go back to the CRM. So in your main page, right, this is considered your dashboard page. If you click on your dashboard, you come to this place, then you got the, um, the legend on the side here. That's what I was looking for. Lead engine. And then you scroll down to core property boost. And then it will say, what would you like to do? Right. You, you can get more leads, promote a listing, all those kind of tools right here. I believe it's the promote a listing one will then bring you to the open house page. Oh, sign in. So it's pulling up my past ones I've done. So you could pull up listings that you want to boost, but this is where you're going to boost your property. Okay, 
So you're going to either boost your property or where's the, I don't see the open house um, ad, Kenny. When you go in to boost a property, you put the address. Oh, there it is. It I found it. The options. Yep. Yeah. So the property boost, you could go right here, listing, open house, price reduction, sold, or a life cycle. So we go to open house and then uh, individual status, all select agent, Randy Bird, start date, end date. And then we can pull up the listings that we can promote. Okay. So if it's not your listing, I think you have to get um, some kind of permission to get KB Core to be able to use that particular open house. I'm not sure if you can manually put it in. Kenny, do you remember if you did that? Yeah. In fact, the, the open house I did, it actually wasn't an EXP one. It was actually one that's at the end of my street. I love it. And I uh, got to be, I met the agent, got to kind of be friends with her and she moved out of the area. So I'm handling this house, trying to bring the buyer and also get some leads from the open house. So what I did is you go into the boost property, put the address in there, and then it gives you the options of doing the open house boost. Or okay, the awesome. cycle. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so click the boost property, you click this. Uh, yep. And then, and then you put um, the property address. If you pull up some properties, they'll start auto-populating in there. Yep. Okay, cool. Kenny, thank you. Yep. Okay, so that's uh, the, I've never done the open house boost yet. That sounds like a strategy that was very valuable for you though. We've had, um, I'll, I'll show up some of my, see if I could show some of my past ads that we've done. So you can see we've ran uh, a couple ads. We've ran more than two, but you can see some of these, some of the performance on this particular listing. Um, we ran it for a week. We ran this multiple times, but we had 1,288 impressions, 49 clicks, 14 leads from one ad for 60 bucks. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's not showing all my other posts. Where do these is, ads get advertised, Randy? So they post, they promote them on Facebook and they do retargeting as well. Okay. So let me sign in. I think something's broken because it doesn't have Randy Bird. It only has the Birdhouse team. And I only have two ads. We ran at least probably 10. So that's interesting. They updated something recently here, or it might be part of the team situation. Um, property boost enterprise. Okay, that's having me sign up for something. That's interesting. It's uh, it's showing up kind of like as my team only, and it's not let me see my particular property boost that we've done. Only the team ones that Elite and I have done. So I'll have to reach out to him and ask him about that. Why it's not pulling up Randy Bird on my profile? But we've had really tremendous results. Average is $2.16 per lead in that system, which is uh, very, very nicely priced as a compose, you know, compared to Zillow and some of the others that are 10, Boomtown 15, and Zillow now somewhere between 30 and $100 per lead. Could be very valuable for you. Okay, answer your question there a little bit. Again, if you guys have any questions, the best thing to do is go down to this little blue uh, message icon at the bottom and then just ask them a question. The secret to get through this is because it, it tries to push you to help articles now. They've, they've got so many people. They just brought on Remax and 85,000 EXP agents and all these people. It's, it's set up as bots now. So it keeps trying to push you into support and, and contact support in these ways. I just always keep going by it by just saying, send us a message and then ask a question. It's still going to have a bot answering these questions. And I just go, uh, no. And then it's going to give you an option to talk to somebody. Okay. So it's going to, you can rephrase the question or it says, wait for the team member, right? I don't like looking through search articles. I, I want service. So I hit wait for the team. That's how you get through it. And then, okay, they'll be here in uh, within 10 minutes to ask a question. It will pop up on my, on my computer. And then I could say question, for instance, 
question. My property boosts are not showing Randy Bird. I think they already asked Randy Bird. Just my team and only shows two boosts. I have more. Right? So that gives them an idea what I want to talk about. So they've already reached out to me. I'm going to say good morning, right? Because I just went right into it. So I'm talking to a live person now, Melina. Hi, Melina. So now I'm talking to a live person and, and getting help. Other than that, you're going to go through the search articles and stuff forever. But you see how valuable that is as a shortcut. Um, back five years ago, you can get people right away, but now they have to go through this process. All right, so she's chatting with me. I can close this and wait wait for it to make noise on my computer and we can keep moving. And then I'll show you in real time how she's resolving the issue and what's going on. Any other questions? As a, again, I'm shared screen. I can't see you raising your hands or otherwise. I have a question, Randy. Um... Back in Texas, we were able to do squeeze pages on other EXP listings without yep. permission. Can you do that here? Yes. Okay. So let's let's show some squeeze pages. Um, by the letter of the law, I asked the broker specifically, and she goes, it's always better to get the agent's permission to promote their listings. But the reality is you can promote EXP listings because the broker's already got that approval effectively. But the courtesy and the right thing to do is just let an agent know, hey, I'm going to I'm going to put some of your listings on my website, see if we can help each other. Is that cool? And just in an email. So you have some kind of, you know, format for that, because they could complain that you're doing something without their permission. Some agents are weird. I'm like, promote all mine, man. Bring bring all buyers to me. Right. But what you could do in, in uh, you go to lead engine. And then you could build a squeeze page. Build a squeeze page. And then you could say where you want the squeeze page to pull from, right? Or push to. It's going to back to the lead engine. And then you could say, do you want to do a multi-property, a single property, a seller squeeze page, market report? So let's let's do a single property. And then now you'll put in the listing ID or address. And if you when you go into there's an area in there to see all EXP listings. Let me let me try this. So if I go to my company listings right here. So if I go to the company listings, again, I'm going to go to the listings tab, my listings, company listings, manual enter listings. Like if you get a FISBO that says you could promote their thing, you could put it in manual listings and then do a boost on it. Um, and then team listings, right? So if I click on any of these things, it's going to pull up whatever I may have in, in that particular Six situation. So I'm going to go to uh, um, agency listings. Let me clear that and start over. I'm going to go company listings. Okay. So there are over 10,000 company listings currently active in KV Core. All right. So now I'm going to try and narrow it down a little bit more. Oh, there she's responding to me. You guys can see my screen. Morning, which boosts are not showing? They were purchased under which account? Um, I have several. Should be under Randy Bird. Only Birdhouse team is showing. Okay. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel this and, and then she'll respond and I'll probably wait a little bit. But let's say, for instance, you want to filter this a little more. Let's go location. Let's go um, Redding, California. Let's see what we get here. Apply filters. Okay. Um, San Francisco, it doesn't look like it worked in that, 
Let me try 96001, see if it will work on that zip code. And then you might have to come down and hit apply filters. Still not working. So I think you have to click on the drop down when it, when it shows up under location when you put 96001. I thought I did that. 96001. See how it like pulls it up underneath? Hold on. Well, now it's not doing it. Weird. It didn't do it that time. Let me try this. Let me try reading. Yeah, it's not pulling a drawdown. Use geographical areas instead of, let's go Shasta, try and make it broader. There we go, Shasta, California, for instance. That's probably not the right thing I'm looking for. But let's scroll down and see what that does. Come on, baby, scroll. There we go, filters applied. Okay, there we go. So now we're Shasta. It's pulling up Redding, Montgomery Creek, Platina, Shingletown, Eagle. These are all Redding cities and areas, right? So let's just say you see this one and let's just find Sunglow in Redding, California. So here's Sunglow. It's Rhonda Culp. This is not an EXP, so it should not have pulled this up. It should have, um, because we, we did all EXP listings, I thought. So let's go back to that and look. Filters applied. Oh. See, it switched to all when I was doing some of these searches. So agency listings. Let's scroll down. So it pulled up all the MLS listings. So nothing pulls up for Shasta, at least in this search. Let's go. Um, that should because there was several Shasta. Shasta County. That's just not liking me today. Let's see if we could do it this way, see if it Matt helps. I can't control technology, sorry. Let's just go um, draw an area. Let's go, let's put something around Santa Rosa and see what comes up. Apply selections. And my KV core is in Oregon now, so that might be a challenge. But here, that worked out pretty well. You see how we got all these Santa Rosa, Petaluma, and all that stuff. Now, let me pull up just something. Let's look at this one. So this one doesn't look like it's an EXP listing is either. So it should be pulling up all EXP listings unless this filter reverted again. No, it's on agency listings. So that might be something you need to connect with KV Core and have them fix it if it's wrong like that in your particular area. I want to try one more thing. The listing agent, if you know who it is, you can also do stuff like you could find specific listing agents. Okay, Andrea Beam. Come down. And no matching results because we've got some other filter screwed up somewhere here. No, I don't see anything. So it's just not, it's just not loving it today. This usually works pretty well. Um, and again, if you just hit my agent listings, you can search for agents, search for properties, but it's just not, it's not liking it today. It might be because I moved out of the Shasta market up to Oregon. And most of my stuff is now in, in the Oregon location. But again, did I have a location on there? Let me take all this off and put Andrea Beam. Let me try that. And there was two Andrea Beams, so I'm going to try them both. But So now we got Andrea Beam. Let's pull up some of these and see if they're actually... Okay, so that worked. So I've got Andrea Beam, and I've got all her listings popping up here. So now all these listings that her and I have an agreement to, yep, that's hers as well. So I don't know, I think it was the California thing. Your KV course shouldn't do that because you're in that particular MLS, okay? But if I've got permission from her, I could pull this up 
And now I can I can click on it and I could say boost property. And then it's pulling up that listing. I could say what I'm gonna, this is exactly what the uh, the ad will look like. It's gonna push them to my website, not hers. It's uh, 45 for an open house, 60 to promote your listing. So if I have her blessing globally, I could promote all these as much as I want to. And you can do 60 bucks for a week, 150 bucks, uh, 150 for 21 days. And then this is uh, four weeks for 250. All right. And you get other things. You get, you know, blah, blah, blah. But again, the very powerful opportunity here. You could also say, hey, I'm going to do an open house for her. Just that simple. We got an open house thing going out. You can make it display the price or you can take it off, right? There's the price. Display images. You could put what other images you want on here, like just listed, open house, pretty cool situation. And then again, if you clicked uh, select, it's just going to go through the billing part and say, okay, we're ready to, we're ready to rock and roll. Um, here's your billing information. And we're going to get started. And I've saved my credit card and stuff. So it's literally a one click done deal. It's going to promote and it's going to run for three days and it tells you when it will run. Obviously, if you're doing it for the weekend, you want to run it Friday or Thursday, Friday, and maybe Saturday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, something like that. But pretty cool. You can see the ad preview on the desktop and you can see the ad preview on the mobile by clicking these different buttons here. That's the desktop. That's the mobile. Okay. Pretty cool beans, though. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so what is the advantage of using the squeeze page over the property boost? That's or right. I, I, I kind of went on a tangent on the property boost, didn't I? Let me go back to Kristen's question. So um, lead engine, squeeze page. Squeeze page, you could do a squeeze page for a single property, or you could do multiple properties. And they don't have to be yours necessarily. I'm going to put Corvallis in here, for instance. So Corvallis, Oregon. Listing type, I want only residential. Single family. Price range, you could put prices in here like 400 to 600. And then any other things you want to do, you could put in here. And then you can get very detailed in this, or you could leave it fairly generic. And, and I just generated a link for that particular squeeze page. Now watch, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna open another tab and paste it in it. And hopefully, so that's what will show up when you send somebody that link on social media. It will say homes in Corvallis between four and 600,000. And it will bring up this search page like a Zillow type format. They could see the houses. They could look at the details. They have to register on my site after they look at five pictures. I've set it up that way. It's all manageable. But you can see it's provided by Biggs Realty, so it's compliant. But it's all the inf other information is about and to you. And this is all just done quickly by hitting the pages like I showed you. Doing a parameter, you can do it per neighborhood, per price range, a lot of different opportunities. Request a showing. If they click on this, it will go to you, right? They're saying, I want to look at this property, even though it's somebody else's listing, the squeeze page is circling those things. So where this is super valuable is when you get into um, doing a squeeze page, for instance, like say, for instance, you're doing um, a, a price point, like under $400,000, and you could say homes listed under $400,000 in Redding, California, then that's the only thing that will come up on that search or homes between 400 and 500, whatever you want to do. Um, it really creates an opportunity for you to say, you know, here's homes in the specific price category that I can help you with. Here's properties on acreage. So you can come down and put acreage of, you know, at least two acres or above in Corvallis. So let's see if that comes up with anything, first of all. Okay, um, oh, Corvallis. So Corvallis, two acres in Corvallis is tough to find. It's definitely not gonna be 600,000. So I'm gonna take the price out, but 
but I'm doing acreage of at least two acres, okay? Generate link. It also has a short link. So if you want a shorter link instead of that long link, and this should bring up properties that are in the price range of uh, whatever, but with two acres and there they are. So here's one in Corvallis for 495 with two acres. So now I'm gonna to go to Facebook real quick and show you how easy this is to make these things. And if you embrace this and get proficient in it, it could be a big opportunity in your business by itself. So, so for instance, I'm going to go, I'm gonna refresh that, I'm gonna reshare that. So in my post, in my post up here, you go, what's on your mind, right? All I have to do is put in that, that link and it's gonna pull up that report in just a second on Facebook should have pictures of it and everything, okay? So here you go, single family condos, multifamily in Corvallis. So what I wanna put in here is um, looking for Corvallis um, homes on at least two acres. Here is today's list. List. Call or DM me for details. Okay? Not my listings, none of my stuff. You can you can change all this language. Now I didn't select single family. Remember that? I missed that part. So it said all this stuff. But if I wanted to go back, but I'm gonna post it, no big deal, right? Post it on Facebook. So I just posted that um, lead capture page on Facebook looking for Corvallis homes on at least two acres. Here's today's list. Call me for details. They click on it. It's going to take them to that search we just did. Here's seven or eight properties, right? Single family. I did condo, commercial, all, everything. But here's several properties on two acres. And it says listed by town and country, but not their information. So they're going to Everything they do is defaulting back to you, okay? So it's it's really a cool opportunity for you to <clears throat> create lead generation for free through squeeze pages, okay? And then when you're at this point, you can print a flyer. You could also share this one particular home on Facebook at a click of a button by saying, there you go. Property highlight of the day, right? Property highlight of the day. Of the day. Okay. And then this says accepted offer with contingencies, commanding 200, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to post that because I don't want that in there. But I could share this in a group just as easily. I can group. Um, I think my group is called um, Apprentice Group. So this is a private group. So I'm sharing it to that Facebook group right now, a private apprentice group that I have, okay? So not my listing, it's listed by Cadwell Realty, but it's an MLS listing. So is because we're putting their name in here, it's compliant. Again, I want to err on the side of you getting permission to do this. I'm gonna look at the chat, squeeze pages free, correct. Um, so there's no cost in doing all this stuff. I, Kristen just talked about, and I just talked about this. I'm a beg for forgiveness instead of ask for permission guy. Just, it is what it is, right? Meaning that this is made to be compliant. This is made to say the broker's name is in the ad. But if you really think about it, if you're promoting somebody's ad specifically, like this single listing that I did, you want to you get their permission to do that if it's a single listing. But if you do the ones that I did that were, several listings like these, right? This is okay. And, and it's compliant because it's got their the name of the listing company. But again, if you go into the details of this, it doesn't usually have their phone number. It just says Remax Integrity Corvallis Branch. That's it. It doesn't have the listing agent's name or phone number anywhere in here. And then because it's on my site, they get that property. And then they get all the information, my contact information, 
And then uh, you could find your home's value. You click that and put in your value. And then you could also see all the school information, the price strategy, a satellite image of it, um, which you can enlarge, move around. And then down here, this is, uh, what is this? It's black. I don't know what that was, but it looked like it was a Google Maps. And then similar properties that the computer, the, the KV core system is matching up based on that price point. By the way, if they look at a couple of properties on KV core, it will automatically assign them a um, property search based on the parameters of that. If they're looking at houses, all with three cars, garage doors, it will automatically build a search profile for three car garage doors and so on. And then you see my testimonies at the bottom and then all the EXP stuff at the bottom, right? So RMLS, Willamette Valley, Barry MS, all the MLSs I'm part of are here. And I'm not, I'm not listed as a Shasta County MLS, which I'm actually a member of, but that might be why Reading was messed up on my KV Corp, okay? So I know you have questions on that. What, what questions do you have what, about the, you know, making the squeeze pages specifically? Yes, Kenny. I have more of a comment on the squeeze page. Um, the squeeze pages are pretty cool once you get into them. You can actually go in there and do a squeeze page for like price reductions for like a certain area, like your county. You can actually draw a map. So I knew a couple of months New ago. New listings are also another powerful squeeze page. New listings today. And you could promote that every day by spending five minutes in the morning by pulling up the new listings in KV Core. Exactly. And I used one. Uh, I knew I was going to have a tough conversation about a price reduction with a client of mine. So what I did is I actually put our geographical area in the price range. I, I know these people are on Facebook pretty often. So I put it on there as price reductions. I let it sit there for like two days before I called them. I said, hey, I'm not sure if you guys saw the post I did or not, but there's a lot of price reductions in the area. I think in about a week or so, we might have to have that same conversation. I just kind of want to lay the groundwork there. So I kind of used the, the squeeze page to do a little bit of the, the work for me on that. I like that. I like that a lot. What other questions, thanks, Kenny. What other questions on squeeze page? Not Who's committed to building time. squeeze pages now after this training? Yeah, what a great idea for new agents to get business, new business. Yeah, well, what about you? What about if you're going for a million, like, yeah. like I'm, I'm branding myself as the Oregon Luxury Group because I don't have the bandwidth to work with just buyers and sellers on a daily basis, but $3 million properties I can. What about if I build a squeeze page every single day about high-end properties and post it on my social media? It gives the presence that I'm the social media mayor in high-end properties, right? Luxury. That's the power of this. Or if you're in a specific area, Oceanside or Reading or wherever you happen to be, right? So I think that really is the power of KV Core's sweat equity, because this is sweat equity, meaning you have to do it yourself, but it's free to do, right? And then remember, there's there's some awesome ones for seller squeeze page. I'm going to show you. So if you're back to the lead engine, right, you're, you're here, you could do a landing page, right, which is promoting your website, a squeeze page, which is home searches. And so if you if you do this and you and you start building a squeeze page, you could do a seller squeeze page as well. And look at how look at how simple it is. I mean, you're literally saying, OK, I'm going to do it on Facebook. And uh, I'm going to do it for Redding, California. Okay, generate link. Let's let's try this. So that took me all of like two seconds. If it works, it's going to be awesome. So here's a squeeze page that I built for sellers in Redding. Okay, so enter your home address. Now th this is this doesn't look right. Um, Let's see, uh, 3682 Eagle Parkway. And it will it will put in the address as you progress, right? Um, Eagle Parkway, Redding, California. Redding, California. There it is. Okay, so I put my address in that. It's asking me if this is my information. I hit yes. So it makes them give you the information. And then it's pulling up these different Zillow not available. That's weird. It pulled up Reading, but it said 493,600, which is actually pretty accurate. This is an old house I owned. 
So, um, and then you could also say independent home valuations. This is kind of a new page for me, but you could see where it says a little bit about the bio and it's a seller squeeze page. Given any time, you could do something pretty special with this. I did it in two minutes. Okay. It's always going to take you back to the main websites. But the other thing I wanted to show you is the market report. You could do a market report. I'm going to do Corvallis because of my MLS situation. It's acting funky. So Corvallis, Oregon. And then I want to do it on Facebook. I, I don't even have to put that in there. I could look for hashtags, generate a link, right? Copy. Let's try it one more time. So all I did was a market report for Corvallis. And then you could post that link on your social media. Let's see if it's going to work. KB Core, I'm trying to promote you today and you're jacking me up here. Copy. Paste. Okay, there it is. Market report for Corvallis. The short link didn't like it for some reason. But here's in, in 10 seconds. What about if you did this every single Friday in your business and you became the real estate expert for your area? Here's your market report every Friday brought to you by Kristen Love. Nobody else is doing this, right? And then so it's going to pull up their report that says how many homes on the market, average home price, and it becomes very sticky if you do it every week. So they could see it rather than you could do your newsletter or your live video or whatever for a market report every month. But this is an opportunity for you to do it on a weekly basis. And it's going to set you apart, right? They have the ability to subscribe for monthly updates, all these things that you have available in KV Core for free. Okay. All right. I know that's a lot of information. We record it for that reason. But what takeaways? First of all, who's going to do a, a seller squeeze page or a squeeze page now on a regular basis, right? Most definitely. For sure. Right? Yeah. And, give it a go. Yeah. And so I don't even know if this will work. I have a couple of minutes. Let me try something. This is kind of personal, but I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to KV Core. You guys see my KV Core? Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Somebody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Multi-property, watch this. I'm going to do Oregon. I want all of Oregon. Let's see if it will work. I got Oregon, state of Oregon. Where Oregon Trail, Oregon Shores, Oregon City. It won't let me do Oregon, so let's do Portland. I'm going to do Portland, Oregon. And I'm going to say I want minimum price range of $2 million to no max. I don't want anything else except residential, right? Oops, not pending. Single family. Okay, single family over $2 million. That's all I'm looking at. And if you go to the, um, if you go in here and generate the link, now let's see if this pulls up properties that are over $2 million. Copy. So like if I posted this link on Facebook, it's going to pull it all up for me. So there you go. There, there are 51 homes that are over $2 million. So what do you think it would happen on social media if I posted every day, took this two minutes and just said, here's all the properties in Portland over $2 million. Call us your luxury brokers, right? And I just keep promoting that every single day on my social media. The agents around the nation start seeing that for referrals. The people in locally start seeing that. As they come into my CRM, I could retarget them on Facebook, start throwing Facebook ads for luxury in front of them. This is what we're working on actively. So you can see the power of this. So when they when they go through this, they're going to start seeing their property details or, or these $2 million plus properties. And I can identify myself as a luxury agent very quickly without a single MLS listing. Okay. I did that in minutes to show you. That's the power of KV Core. So what's your niche? Do you want it to be Riverbend Estates? Do you want it to be golf course homes? Do you want it to be luxury homes, first time home buyers, investments only, units of five units or more, multifamily, commercial? All these are all different opportunities for you to use for free on this website, right? It's supplied for you for free. It's sweat equity. 
So don't just stare at me. Do something. Get these things working for yourself. All right. I'll try so, them today. Good. The homework today is to try a couple of these. Put them on your Facebook. Tag me so I could love on you and, and say, good job. It looks like you have a lot of listings. Do something, right? But do these. Cassie, are you still there? All right. Um, make sure that you're posting and tagging me so I can help you and love on you. And then, you know, the more people that you could tag, the better. You get family members or partners here that you go, hey, I'm going to tag you as well so you can get more activity on your feeds. That's that's valuable and important. Okay. All right. Any other questions before I go? Very good stuff, Randy. Yep. yep. Thank you. This Thank is you, brother. Yeah. We're going to do the KV core training every other week, focused on okay. lead generation activities, focus on automations and systems and things to help you help you really take advantage of KV core. Um, KV core is very robust. I got to say, you know, um, if I was in production full time, I think we'd be all in on this, but um, I'm focused on agent attraction uh, in many capacities. I've told you about that, but use this for your business because we've got to get you foundational business so you can free up time and financial and time freedom to do more attraction, right? which is what we're passionate about, right? Um, but think about this. Remax just abandoned their whole CRM system and went to 